How are you guys? This is JP Sarri once again, and this time I'm coming back with another review, uh, another book review, and I'm very, very glad uh, that I'm able to review this um, book for you. I've been looking forward to review this Absolute Watchmen for quite a while. I've been extremely busy. I've been doing all kind of, uh, you know, reviews for for statues and collectibles, and I haven't really had a chance to do this, but it's been in the back of my mind. Uh, but going back to my uh, some of my roots, some of the stuff that I really enjoy, I want to give, um, this time I want to review this amazing collection, uh, this amazing book, The Absolute Watchman, that is really hard to get nowadays uh, unless you go into the aftermarket or maybe some retailers might have it, enough, and the price is it's pretty steep. Uh, it's not one of the um, cheapest, um, um, in this case, absolute books. Uh, as you can see right there, uh, let me show you when it came out. This actually came out back in 2005, and there was a few reprints. I think this is one of the reprints. I don't remember. I bought it uh, some time ago. Um, so it's $99 in the U.S., 112 in Canada. Uh, it's a, a book that came out in the in the 80s, 1986, 1987. Was a miniseries uh, that was done by um, DC Comics, and it was written by Alan Moore, the great Alan Moore, and it was uh, drawn by uh, Dave Gibbons. Uh, it's an amazing collection. Uh, even uh, John Higgins was the colorist. This is, I would say, pretty much the one that changed the industry for what it is now to create a different type of, uh, of a comic book. Uh, and as you know, I know you have probably read a lot of the reviews, you have seen a lot of reviews. This is my take on one classic. As you can see right here, it, it comes in this case. Uh, mine has like a little dent right there. Uh, that's the way it came from the when I bought it, you know, and it came, you know, with the, you know, wrap and everything. And as you can see, it has the, uh, and this the clock, the famous uh, apocalypse uh, uh, doom clock. Now, taking the book out of the case, of the, in this hard case, as you can see right here, it says Watchman. This is a, uh, a very now classic image of this. You see the happy face, the eye with the spatter of blood. Um, very nice, uh, as you can see the dust jacket, here in the back is red. Now these Absolute books uh, really have a lot of great quality, they're great, uh, I really like them. It's one of the best books that you can get from DC Comics. And as you can see right there, it opens up, it says Watchman. At the end it's going to say, if you open all the way in the back, it's going to continue and it's going to say, uh, in this case, the other part, Watchman. Uh, it's very, very, very cool. Um, the only thing about this book that I might not be crazy about is the paper. Uh, it's one of the first absolutes that came out for war, and that reason the paper uh, still has a little trade paperback quality. Uh, it's not like the laminated type that now is used for a lot of the books. Uh, but still, you know, so you have to be careful not to tear it because this tears quickly. I started reading Watchmen when I was a kid. Uh, I read it for the first time. My brother brought it home. Uh, he borrowed it from a friend, a uh, trade paperback. Uh, back in the, I would say probably in the early 90s, maybe. Um, sometime, I was probably around 12. I couldn't understand it, and I didn't like it. Uh, it was not something that I, you know, I, it was very young, and I couldn't understand a lot of the things that were said. Uh, I felt a little too complicated for me. Chapter 1, as you can see, has the, the covers on the side. And it, let me tell you, like I was telling you about this book, so it's just, I read it, I wasn't extremely crazy about it um, because it was the thematics were a little hard for me my you know my brother says don't show this is that because he might not allow you to read it I didn't like it didn't understand it I don't think I even finished it then later on in, in school you know later on I was older you know going through through school you know I have to read it uh, from one of my classes um, in school I think it was sociology or something like that um, I was okay I understood a lot better uh, I was a little more into it but not really as much and as you can see it has the the art is very very nice if you have seen the movie you have seen some of this scene this is the when the comedian is murdered um, and as you can see uh, the art is beautiful there's a lot of art um, and everything you know the, the nine panels um, the type of design that is here uh, but yes um, I was not into it I didn't like it uh, but then after a while, you know, for years passed, then the movie came out, then I went and watched the movie again, and I really 
kind of understood part of it and I said I'm gonna go back to the book so I went back to the book and I read the book and this time I, I enjoy it more and I can say that a lot of people dislike the movie I really enjoyed it because in reality it was a great well-crafted movie that was based on the art but now that I can read it after so many years and I'm a whole older person I'm more mature of course you know I have grown in my life as a person then I, I could enjoy understand the things that they were outlined that, that I couldn't see back then when I was too young. And I came to know one of the best books and one of the best, um, I would say one of the best pieces of art of recent times of the, this generation. Um, and it's here. Um, the art is very retro in many ways. Um, but it's very nice. Um, when this case, uh, Alan Moore and they given sit down to plan this and they were supported. Um, if you're not familiar with Alan Moore, uh, as familiar with him, he is, you know, and Dave Gibbons, all they are, they're British, they are part of the, what is called the now the British Invasion that came in the in the mid-80s that were supported mostly by DC Comics. Uh, American writers were very well known for their plot, they were well known for their, their superheroes, they were more light type of stories, not as dark, but uh, English writers, they have uh, probably a darker sense in their writing, but they were more, they have a way to play with words that was, uh, it was tremendous, it was fascinating, it was one of the, the, the best arts that you can find. English writers are great writers. They know how to write, they know how to use words in a way that makes you think, and sometimes they're deeper uh, and, and the way they express um, themselves, the way they express, the ideas they express. And this book was totally different when it came out. So when Alan Moore decided to change out, they had a plan to create a different book using actually uh, DC Comics bought the, in that time the Charleston Comics. The Charleston Comics went out and many of these characters like the Blue Beetle, um, uh, other characters, uh, they pretty much um, came into the possession of um, of DC Comics, uh, Alan Moore was given the opportunity to create a book. He said, let's create something. And he came with the idea, said, Let, I want to create a, a story with these characters. But after a while, and there's some ex excerpts that were done under the hood. If you know the story, you know what's going on. Uh, this is part of the story. This is one of the greatest things. Uh, this is actually within the story. There is another story. So in this case, this is a, an autobiography of Hollis Mason, the first night owl. And actually, that whole place within the story uh, makes it so fascinating. This is not a non, it's a non-linear story. It means that it doesn't really follow a time frame. Um, there is sometimes you're taken to the past, sometimes taken to the present. Uh, in this case, sometimes to the future. It's just, it plays with you in a way that keeps you so entertained. And this is chapter two. Um, and I did it so well. So when they planned that, they, he came with the idea that they want to make a story with those characters that were well known. But DC knew in that moment that if this story was written the way that uh, Alan Moore wanted to write it down, um, it will create a, a, a change in these characters for life. Um, so some might buy, some might die, some might survive. So they decided, they say, they tell Alan Moore, hey, Alan Moore, just go ahead and create a new story. Bring something different. And then he, using, the, in this case, the characters from Charleston Comics, he decided to create the same. And the centerpiece of the story is always being in the sense he asked the question, what's the purpose of superheroes? If you really go into the story, you really ask the question, what is the reason of superheroes? Uh, this is part where he is in the past, on, on, is relieving some of the stuff that happened in the past with the Minutemen. Um, those are the, 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 one of the first superhero teams, supposedly, in the story. And as you can see right there, there's a lot of elements that show a little violent scenes and a lot of, there's a sexual themes, a lot of deep stuff that for young readers, uh, I wouldn't consider are appropriate uh, because I don't think they can understand fully the scope of things. Uh, there is a lot of um, uh, subjects that I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend for young readers to read. I think you have to have a little more maturity in order to see this and really appreciate the deepness of what is in the story. And as you can see, um, uh, Dave Gibbons did such a fantastic job. He used a very classical nine panel um, art system that was used in all comics. If you're familiar with all Western comics and all the older comics, they have this nine panel, nine panels. Although this might be old style for what the format that is used nowadays, this allows uh, artists to be able to express things in, in, a, in a cinematographical, I don't know if I'm using the right word, 
they use it the, the, in a way that is more like cinematography. Uh, it's like a film. You know, you are praising the stage, stage by stage. You are creating steps. So in reality, you can see the evolution. Like you can see right here, there is a close-up. And there's another close-up. And there is going back into the, to seeing things that happened in the past. He's remembering things. But every scene goes to the next. That brings such a much detail. They give us masterfully allow so much detail to this art. When they started creating this project, they give us came aboard. They sit down and they plan this um, really ahead of time. And they say when they start doing the story, they didn't have the story really. Uh, Watchmen, as soon as it began, uh, they knew they have 12 issues um, to produce. But the truth is, and you can see this part of the movie. I like that, all that that was included in the movie. Uh, everything is based on this art. And if you watch the movie and you can understand the movie, and if you never liked the movie, you have to read this. You know, you have to really read it. Then you're going to appreciate what was done. Yes, the movie's never going to really recreate everything as appropriate or as, uh, as, 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 as exactly. But, uh, uh, you know, you can see what was that. And, you know, then you appreciate the story even more. Uh, as you can see, and and they give us, uh, they sit down with uh, Alan Moore, and, and, and in their in their talks, they 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 realize that they didn't have enough um, things to create a longer story. It really, they only have material for four, so that's why they and you know what? Because it was a, really a, a project that was not down before. Uh, many of these comics, and back in the day, they were not comic stores. A lot of these were sold. Um, comics were sold in the you know regular grocery stores. You go into the checkout line, and then you see that. And you, oh, to this day, you can go to the checkout line, and you still see some some books like Archie comics and other other uh, more lighter comics, but also a lot of magazines. That's how comics were sold back in the day. And you know the way that these comics were actually supported is that they have a lot of advertisement. They had advertisement inside because they didn't have enough advertisement. You know, they have to really in, uh, it bring a lot of uh, the story into each comic, trying to fill the gaps. And, you know, they didn't know what to do. And <laughs> because nobody was really interested in actually, you know, paying ads for some material that in reality was completely um, different. And as you can see, the scenes right here are amazing. All the detail that they add to it. You know, there's a lot of sexual elements here. There is in a, in a time where he's in New York City, of course, and you can see the dark. Uh, it is really, really dark, um, but you know it, it was well manifested. And I can tell you that they really sit down, they did really present things as realistically as possible. You see superheroes in the flesh, and that's something that no other comic writer, no other comic artist has presented. You see people, superheroes, as flow individuals. These colors are so perfect for this. This kind of like a British type of color, that's actually part of the art, brought this type of like a yellow terracottas and you know all these um, earthy uh, type of colors that reality plays so well with the image. It was not shiny like bright like many of the you know the American comics. It was more earth. It was more personal. It was more uh, you know really present things in. It felt more in depth more in the skin, you know, under the skin. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the story. I think you need to read it. If you know the story, you know it well. But, you know, I like this book. And having this collection, this absolute version, that even though it's hard to come by, you know, I'm telling you, it's just it, it just it's amazing to see this as big as it is. You know, I love it. You know, I love the stories. I love that. I love that he always added, like, even Bible passages to the, the, to the, to the, to everything. You know, some... Um, some sayings or some comments for other even artists or or scientists you know scientists or important people all that you know creates such a rich story such a story that rea in reality it plays so well uh, you know if you can read so many stories you can read so many books you can make so many comics and sometimes comics are good um but this was this was and uh, and the moment that was created you know and i like the way they did it here this is classic and the movie recreated so well so well the way it was done here um it's just amazing you know the story the art is so clean the anatomy is so clean yes there's some naked bodies in this um in this art but the art is fascinating the facial expressions you can see that you know he just he was a master to be honest i think jack snyder did such a great job with his movie 
Um, although a lot of people disliked the movie. But the truth is, a lot of people went to the movie theater, people that never knew the story, never read it, and they couldn't understand it. You know, we're like, what is this? You know, like, you know, this is not superheroes. You know, not as we know it. And the truth is that this is not as we know it. Um, you know, if you know the concept of graphic novels, um, graphic novels were really uh, empowered or really introduced by Wills Eisner and with the, the con a contract to God, I think a contract with God, that was the book that he wrote uh, back in 1978, very famous, very uh, underground, uh, but he introduced that concept of a darker scenes, you know, talking about using comics as a, as a medium to express things about life. Uh, I like the, what he did here. You can, you can see, like I said, the mad panel. You can see ghost as seen, as they've seen. Everything adds to it. Everything adds to it. Like you can see right there, this coming out, this um, structure that he builds in Mars coming out of, of Earth. It's just amazing. And it, this was done in the movie perfectly, masterfully. Rorschach there, um, part of the story. Rorschach, because it starts as a diary. You know, Rorschach is writing that diary where he's talking about what's happening and he's trying to solve a murder, a murder mystery, who murdered the comedians. And all this works together in a way that really enriches the story, makes it more powerful. Um, the art is so fantastic. The facial expressions, the scene right there when he he's attacked and then he jumps and then he attacks his attacker, it's just fascinating. The way he did it is masterfully. You know, everything that was done was, it was, Fantastic, and here's more the story of the man on 15 dead man's chest. Supposedly, the story uh, it's just amazing. You know, this is a collection that you need to read. As soon as this came out, it was a total success. Back in the mid 80s, when you see with the introductions of books like the, the Frank Miller's um, The Return of the Dark Knight, and in this case, uh, Alan Moore, two years later or a year later, uh, Watchmen, they really brought um, a different type of sentiment about comics. Now, prior to that, people thought of comics as just a lighthearted thing, just for children. But um, these new writers brought an, an, an ideal, an idea where comics were deeper than that. They were a medium where you can express political and social social dilemmas, you know, brought them into into existence and I'm talk about those things um, although I'm not a fan of a lot of the things that Alan Moore has done after that and I'm not a personal fan of his as a person and, and the way that he lives his life and his beliefs you know I really appreciate what he did and I appreciate part of the story I'm not gonna tell you that I completely uh, I'm in favor of everything that he expresses and his idea because I was I heard one time and actually Dave Gibbons expressed that the center stage or the center dilemma of the book of the Watchmen is and if you really look closely is there a God if there a God and if there a God what it, where is he at and what is the purpose of all what is the meaning of life that's really the center question that is there uh, beyond the question about you know the purpose of superheroes and the truth is that it really plants that. What, why are we here? What is the purpose of all? You know, it doesn't matter if, you know, the world's ended, you know, what's going to happen with us. But those dilemmas are presented in the book in a way that, and reality asks, I, I, I let you understand or at least to see things and more clearly and pay attention to it in a way that is uh, powerful and in a way that is rewarding, in a way that is um, deeper. He trying to explore the idea of the superheroes in society. Why we follow the superheroes? Do we need them? And are, why are they? And also present them as flaw individuals. They're human like us. They're people like us. They are flaw uh, in their principle. And some of them, they are torn out. Uh, they throw into becoming superheroes because of the wrong reasons. Um, and really studies that. And it presents us in a way that is fascinating. I always like this here, this image. Um, in this case of Night Owl vehicle in this guy, you know, it's just amazing the way he presented all the detail of New York City. You know, Alan Moore has done a lot of stuff, a lot of really risky stuff, and some stuff that have crossed the line, like the Lost Girls, in my opinion. But, you know, he has done such things, and he's such a great writer, he's a very smart man, and, and he really created a story. Uh, to be honest, he has separated himself from Watchmen since then, if you know his story. He didn't felt, uh, he, he also hates the concept of uh, graphic novels. He doesn't like that. 
uh, he considers this comics and he wants to keep it as comics. And he likes the underground type of environment that comics create uh, for uh, for a small group. But DC Comics use this uh, Watchmen as a way to expand their touch into society in a way. They promote it in a way for, for pretty much two years after this was done. Um, you know, they really um, came and... Uh, he they have he had to tour like at Rockstar all over the place and do interviews and I think that tired him and also there were a lot of miscommunication and a lot of um, dissentment and a lot of unhappiness from part of Alan Moore with DC because he felt that in reality they 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 took advantage of him and you can see Sally Jupiter part of part of her story and the mother um, in this case of uh, the Soul Spectre. Um, uh, Mr. Spexic and as you can see uh, just fascinating part of the story. Uh, this is created in a, an alternate alternate world, an alternate universe of, let's say, what would happen if, you know, there's still the Cold War, pretty much. Uh, it's just amazing. The way the story is so deep, and in a way, he also, Alan Moore was also criticizing the, his... Uh, the, the, the governments of his time, the Ronald Reagan time, uh, you know, Margaret Thatcher time. There's a lot of political um, criticism here. But in many ways, it is well-versed. He is critical. He, he He's uh, openly an anarchist. He believes in anarchy. I personally don't. But he believes that a society, as a, in that anarchy, anarchism is a principle also for socialism, or in this communism, that I personally know because I'm not, as a person that lives in America, I don't believe just in capitalism, but I believe that, you know, that I understand that people are flow in their essence. And, and, you know, and I believe that people, you know, it, it is really hard to really come to a common ground with people. Um, but, you know, that's a personal belief. Um, but I like the way he presented. I think he presents things with facts, with proper facts. And this book is an amazing, um, pretty much, essay of what he believes. And I believe, you know, I really like that. I like the way he expressed it. It's so rich. And, you know, if you know the story, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you know, I recommend that you read it. You need to find the time. The art is fascinating. It's amazing. One of the best arts. This system was actually after, in 1987, Graffiti Designs created um, a collection book put all together. Actually, this is one of the first collections all comics put into one book together. And he designed one. He, this has all the contents of that that story. You know, everything that is here is part of the 12 issues are in this collection, Graffiti Designs. And they also added as a collector, uh, collectible bonus, they added other other things that are at the end of this. But as you can see, you know, the colors are amazing. Everything on this book is fascinating. I just like it. You know, the art, I, can, I have read it a couple times. I continue to read it. Uh, the end is unexpected in many ways. Uh, you know there's something happening, but it's taking you to there. Uh, some people, they say that they was predictable. Some people didn't like the ending as it was. But I personally enjoy it, the way he's presented. It really is, a, it's not about the ending, it's about the trip. It's about the, the journey from the beginning to this point, that you realize that there's a lot of questions. And at the end, as you can see right there, is it would be a stronger world, a stronger loving world to die in, John, John Cale. And as you can see, there is Q's Custodia, it sells Custodes. It means who watches the Watchmen, and of course in Latin. He is the only book that you're going to find where Alan Moore writes down what happened after that, what brought him. He create, he, he, he writes about the whole thing. You're not going to find another book, another book that has this. I, I'm, I don't think so. Because Alan Moore um, broke ties with DC Comics after have you know, discussions in the uh, thing in the 90s about the, uh, the the royalties of Watchmen. So he decided to severe ties. And then later on, he had to go back to work with DC, not because he wanted to. He was working for Image Comics on their Wildstorm that belonged to Jim Lee. But as you know, Jim Lee ended up selling Wildstorm to DC Comics. So he had to go back to work for DC. And then he had to severe that. Uh, while well, he was working for the League of Extraordinary Men, he had to severe ties with them also because he was not happy working with them. Uh, you know, uh, you know more about that. And you know, as you know, the life of Alan Moore. You know, he has severe a lot of. He has burned a lot of bridges since his life. But I think it's part of who he is. And as a person, you know, he enjoys that. And you know, here's the art, Rorschach right there. Some of the the beginning. This was part of the art that was created prior to the book, trying to before things were finalized. 
And I like about this is it contains, for example, in this, this is the, the graffiti design that created this book and all contains everything that was done, a collection book from graffiti designs that was created back in 1987 and 1988, and it was sold uh, as a collectible with a hard case. So it contains that. The only difference with this and that is that this has the new recolor, remastered color. So the colors are much better. But here also he writes, in this case, um, uh, Alan Moore is writing about where he took the uh, inspiration from the, the, the characters, like Dr. Dr. Manhattan, took inspiration of Captain Atten, uh, all this from Charleston Comics. Um, you know, as you can see, part of the art, how he designed it, there's a lot of really, it is very extensive, uh, Ozymandias uh, from Thunderbolt, um, as you can see, he took inspiration from that. Uh, Night Owl, he took inspiration from the Blue Be Beetle. A lot of people say the inspiration is more from Batman because actually Batman took inspiration from the Blue Beetle too. Night Owl right there. Uh, it's just, all this content is, is, is very rich. Rorschach uh, from The Question uh, took inspiration from that. The Comedian from The Peacemaker. Um, all this, you know, it, it's just fantastic. The Sigil Spectre from the Night from Nightshade. Um, I like that, you know, I like here the, the drawings, the, the inspiration that was done in the beginning prior to doing the art. The Minutemen, as you can see, the, you know, some drawings, I like that. And here is more content, you know, images, um, covers, uh, printings, uh, everything that was done prior just to uh, promotional covers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it's just fascinating, you know, some of the, you can find this in some of the covers, some of the, paper the trade paperback and here is something that is really rich here is an issue one he has panels and he puts all the stuff as you can see there's so much information the way he wanted he was in control uh, of this book but the, the fascinating things that they give us really they really created this chemistry between each other that really worked out in creating one of the most the most the best i would say comic book of all times uh, the best graphic novel of all times is here. Uh, you know, as you know, Watchmen, he has won all the awards, you know, the Eisner Award, the Hugo Awards, all this, you know. It's such a fascinating book. I uh, consider one of the best. It's a bestseller, uh, a New York Times bestseller, uh, Washington Post, all this. You know, everybody has talked about it. It's just fascinating. And here is some uh, Dave Givens um, comments, uh, you know, where he talks about the story. This is a fascinating. Mine has some little damage right there. Like I said, this type of paper I'm not a fan of, uh, but it is good. And as you can see, Mars. Now, things are turning into digital media. Um, I really like digital media. I actually have uh, uh, the Watchmen uh, comics in my in my devices, and I read them there. Uh, on my computer, on my phone, uh, tablet, I read them there. I enjoy how the way they look there. I don't have to damage any books and all that stuff. Uh, this book is more for a collectible purpose for me. I like the way it is. I like the old books. I like to have my library of books. And and it's fascinating. Um, fascinating story. Uh, there is a version, a deluxe version that just came out a few years back, maybe two years ago, a year ago recently. I saw it uh, recently. I was in Barnes & Nobles once in a while ago and checked. And very nice price. You can find them on Amazon. Very nice prices. I think it's a well priced. It's a smaller size. It's a deluxe size. So, but it is a hardcover book, and it has the stories. I don't think it has everything, all the whatever the graffiti designs offer, all the extras. But he has extras there too. So it is a more affordable um, alternative that you can find, and that you're gonna enjoy. You know, I think you can find it for less than you know. You can find. I think I saw back there it was like thirty dollars, even less than thirty dollars. So I'm sure you can find it for that price. Uh, it is an excellent book. I would say it's not for younger readers. Younger readers need to be careful with this type of material. If you're a parent and you allow your kids to read books, you know, and you want them to read comics, you can do that. I, sometimes I heard somebody that, you know, make a comment that, you know, let their like six year old read this book so in order to learn life. Honestly, I would not allow my, my six year old to read anything past the Bible. That's my personal opinion. Uh, because you know, I, I, I or any other type of book, you know, even Dr. Seuss, you know, that thing there in that age for that kind of thing. 
but you know absolute watchman is something that needs more maturity to really understand and really appreciate you know the value of it so i recommend it to you you haven't read it it's time for you to read it you know you you're looking into more serious books this was the one that really started trend and you know for good and bad because a lot of people say that after the 80s after this absolute watchman and dark uh, the return of the dark knight there was a darker tone and a lot of people try to imitate what was done here and i can tell you that a lot of people after them to this day try to imitate what was done here and they, of course they cannot succeed because this was the first of the first one but also it really implemented the way of wording was implemented right i think they they didn't want to copy anybody they created a story you know and that story evolved in the way they want to present it and i think that's what writers need to do they need to evolve the story they need to create the story and evolve it from that point on you know not trying to copy somebody and trying to make it well because it's dark tone and then we're going to make everything dark and that's something that has happened up to this day you see a lot of comics that have this darker tone that it feels like force upon like people are forcing it on you and you know honestly you know i, I personally don't like that i don't want to be forced upon this was different this was this presented story and the elements were dark because that was the part of the story that was the story you were talking about it's not like I'm going to force you. And I think, you know, like I've seen people trying to, you know, like a lot of writers trying to put Captain America and then force a darker tone of Captain America or uh, Spider-Man or Thor or any other character. And it feels forced. It doesn't feel right. Uh, you know, and, you know, it's, it, it has to do a lot with your writing skills. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate you took the time. Uh, again, like, comment, and subscribe. Please follow me on my YouTube channel. Follow me. Uh, follow me on my Facebook account or my Instagram account. And if you want to see more pictures of my personal statue collection, you can also go to my photo pocket. Uh, so thank you very much once again, and I'll see you on the next review. Have a good one.